guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch, and today I am going to take you on a tour of our root cellar, and I am also going to show you how it is that we store carrots and beets, and I think we'll probably also do some cabbage in the root cellar. And I have my mom, who's walking away over there. Say oh, hi, hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> She is here today to give me a hand doing this. She just wanted to come out. It's the most beautiful autumn day and it was a gorgeous drive. So she came out to visit and I said, well, I've got this project and she said, I'll help you with that. So she's gonna give me a hand. What are you doing here, little missy? Hello, Maple. Ben and I went and got a bunch of sand from a sand pit that is not far from our house. And now we are gonna use that sand. Yes, honey, what did you find? You found a carrot? Okay, are you gonna eat that carrot? It looks like it needs to be washed, hey? Um, we, what we're going to do, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to get the carrots into some big bins, which I'll show you in a minute, and we're going to layer them with damp sand. Now, it's very important that you use damp sand. As my mom was pointing out, she said that when I was little, when I was just a baby, she had her first big garden and a root cellar, and they didn't know that the sand had to be damp. So they put the carrots in some sand that was dry, and then when they went to pull them out a month later or so, all of the carrots were all shriveled up so it's really important that they have moisture otherwise that's what will happen and you also want to make sure that when you are doing your carrots that you yeah, this one's a little bit <laughs> there when you're doing your carrots that you take off as much of the green on this end as you can without actually cutting the flesh of the carrot so otherwise if you leave too much green there then you will end up getting sprouts a little bit early so we will get started on getting all the sand and everything ready and then I'll do a little bit more explanation on what we're doing when we're actually doing it. So the first thing that you want to do is put about two inches of sand in the bottom of your bin, like so. And then you want to take your carrots and one of the things that's really important is that your carrots are not actually touching when you put them in. You want to help Quinn? And stick them in there. Thank you. So you want to make sure that there's spaced in here and these will last up to a year like this. So this is too much green on here so just snap that off. And for storing carrots like this you want to make sure that you're picking ones that look good. If there's any soft spots in your carrot then you want to make sure that you do not use those ones just use those ones up right away like so. Brown one. Is it? Is that curly. a brown one? It's a curly one. So once you have your carrots neatly in there, well spaced like that, then you put another layer of sand on it. And you just want to make sure that your layer of sand is actually covering your carrots. Thank you, sweetie. Are you helping? Good job. And then just pack it down slightly. You don't have to go crazy. And then do it all again. And then do it all again. I just wanted to mention here that what I'm using is a protein lick tub for cattle. These work really well. Um, whoa! One of the other things, I'm just going to show you quickly something else that I use to store in uh, to store vegetables in the root cellar. I just don't have enough of them otherwise I would use them exclusively but I'll go grab one and show you. So this is just a milk crate, just your regular old milk crate. And you used to be able to get these pretty readily, but now the big grocery stores recycle them, so it's harder to find them. These were here when we bought the place, and there's, I think, I think I have about five or six of them, but they work incredibly well, especially for beets and turnips, and they get enough air circulation through here. And I've been using these without any issue as far as drying out. My root cellar has high enough humidity to keep these good, and I could use, I could do these, uh, this is why editing is so awesome. And I, <laughs> I could um, use my carrots or use these for my carrots if I had enough of them, but since I don't, the protein lick tubs with the um, sand work really, really well.
this is something else that you can use. This is just a flower pot. Just one of those black plastic flower pots. The nice thing about this is it does have drainage holes in the bottom. So you can really be just super creative about what you use to be able to put these in. But these work well. These big tubs work well. So I just want to take advantage of this really nice day that we're having and, and get as much of the produce that is ready into the root cellar. So there's a couple of different ways that you can store Brussels sprouts. You can just bring them inside, cut them off the stalks and blanch them, which means just to put them in hot water, boiling water for three minutes and then into ice water and then freeze them. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is actually to remove the leaves, leave the roots on and store them in the root cellar just like this until I'm ready to use them. So you want to wait as long as possible, you can see how big these Brussels sprouts are, to harvest these and allow them to get a couple of frosts because it causes the, these to be much sweeter. So then just like that and then you put it in your root cellar like this and it will last for a couple of months this way and then you can just go and pop all these off when you're ready to use them. So we're gonna do the same thing with the cabbages as we did with the Brussels sprouts. Take off all the big outer leaves and then leave the roots on and stick them in the root cellar just like that. And I've done this before and it's lasted, I think I had a cabbage last two months like that. So uh, we just ate them, but I planted way more this year. So we'll be able to see how long they will last in the root cellar like this. That was very nice of you. Aurora's standing here shading me from the sun. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I'm wearing a different sweater than I was before, it's because the sweater that I was wearing was actually my mom's and she has since gone home. So I had to give it back to her and put on a different one. So we have about 18 cabbages that we're gonna pick today and then the rest there's probably another 18 or 19. Bo, come back, come back, I need my Sorry. sunblock. <laughs> That's okay. Um, that, we're, that we'll leave in the ground for another couple of weeks and hopefully it's not gonna to freeze too hard and ruin them. They can actually withstand quite a bit of frost. We've already had probably six good frosts come through and, um, and everything is still looking really good. So this one broke off a little bit above the root, so hopefully it'll still be okay, but that's a really nice size cabbage. I will let you guys know as the season progresses how these cabbages are storing. So we ended up only grabbing 14 because I felt like the other ones could use a little bit more time. So now we're gonna bring these into the root cellar and then I'll show you what we have in there. We're not quite finished filling it up yet, but it's getting there. So this is how we're storing our cabbages, just on a pallet like this. And then I just put the Brussels sprouts sitting on top of this as a bin of carrots. And then there's another bin of carrots there. And some more bins of carrots here. And then beets, 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 <laughs> beets, beets, and turnips. And then we have a couple of bins of apples over here. So as you can see, this is a super low tech, hole in the ground style root cellar, but it works. It's effective, not fancy, but effective. And that's really all that matters. When we first looked at this place, this root cellar was actually the thing that I was the most excited about this and the barn. I'd always fantasized about having a 
uh, root cellar like this, an old pioneer style root cellar, and it works. And I've used it for several years now. And I think I mentioned this before, but I have had carrots last for a year, just a bin that I forgot in the root cellar that I pulled out in the fall the following year, and the carrots were still crisp. They didn't taste very good, but they weren't soggy or rotten or anything like that. We're definitely not done our harvest yet. We still have a ton more carrots to pick, and Aurora is bringing in a few more cabbages. Last one. Last one's awesome. And um, we have some more beets. And what else do we have? What else do we have to put in here? And actually some more apples. So there you go, super low tech, easy, and simple way to store your root vegetables and your cabbages in your root cellar. So one of the things about cabbage, most of you know if you've ever tried to cook cabbage or anything like that, is it has a really strong smell. So when you're storing your cabbage in your root cellar, if you're storing things like apples, um, sometimes it can impart a bit of an off taste to your apples. The apples, we only have three boxes of, apple, of apples in here and they'll be eaten really quickly, so I'm not worried about it. With a larger amount of apples, what I might do is store them in the alleyway here because apples can withstand fairly cool temperatures and it still stays above freezing in this area between the front door and the door of the root cellar in the back there. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, everyone, and we'll see you again in a couple of days. Bye. Bye.